So today's topic um, came because of a book that I was reading. You know, we do a lot around love and marriage. Right? Uh-huh. And some of our single family might feel a little left out from all of these conversations about love and connection and communication and all of that. And so we wanted to <clears throat> bring a topic to the table that specifically addresses things that single people uh, go through. Right. And so uh, we want to make sure that we stay good on time. So even though there are a million other things that I want to say, we're going to get right to it. We're going to try. We're going <laughs> to get right to it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So so before you start, I want you to get close to the mic so they can hear everything that you are about to say. <laughs> It's good, people, I'm telling you. Just stay tuned. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, no, you're going to start with... We're going to start. So, we um, knew about catfishing. So, we're going to use some terms. What we're going to do is we're going to go through some terms that represent experiences in relationships mm-hmm. that single people go through. Yeah. And these are things that, without reading about them, I would not have naturally associated these terms with these outcomes, but apparently these are all big things, and these are things that people actually do. Folks are mean, and we should mm-mm. we should stop. <laughs> and there was a lot of them that I, I had not heard of. Um, but we knew about the one you're going to talk about yeah. because it was a show on TV, yeah, and show. our niece hipped us to to, that. to this show. Yeah. So the first one is the first one is catfishing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I will give you the. They refer to it as the informal U.S. definition, (laughs) which is the process of luring someone into a relationship by means of a fictional online persona. Mm. And used in a sentence, it says he was a victim of catfishing. Yeah. So this is the scenario where you have created a completely different person. Yeah. And, um, designed a a life for that person online so it's a fake picture it's every all of the information in the social media profile is fake and all the postings are fake all the tags of, of these other people the whole thing is fake and it has to be intricately done like i i can't even imagine how like, how do you create a whole <laughs> different person? Like, people are stealing other people's pictures, other people's lives, other people's friends, and they are designing these pages that seem very realistic. Yeah, yeah. And yet, it's all a lie. Like, you get catfished. And so, well, I guess the way that you get catfished is you meet this person, perhaps, I guess, online, and you do what our kids are teaching us, that you know, our kids are Magnum P.I. and Sherlock Holmes around yeah, here. Like, if yeah. you say somebody's name, like, they can go online and they can figure out who you are, where you work, what's, you know, where They'll you live, you all out. of that. And I think that that's kind of creepy that you can just go online and find out that magnitude of detail about people. But say you meet somebody um, online and then you go to check out their social media profiles to try to get a little background on them. Mm-hmm. And then you see these pages. You see a Facebook an Instagram, a LinkedIn page, and there's all of this information and all of these pictures, and it looks like a real person. Well, yeah. I guess it is a real person. It's just not the person that you're talking to. Yeah. And we've seen instances where it's really a man behind the the electronic device portraying himself as a woman or a woman who is portraying herself as someone else, as another woman. Mm. And it's all a lie. Like it's all. Yeah. Yeah. The, the one that comes to mind for me, and this is, this is someone shared. It's been a while and it was, and I'm trying to be sensitive in saying this, Please <laughs> but, be uh, but I, I am, I'm definitely going to be sensitive, but I want, I want it to be truthful as it was told to me. How it was portrayed was, and the person said they felt like they were catfished, and it was the individual female. She took a picture of herself, and she only showed like from neck up, mm-hmm. and she was very attractive, as he was telling me this. But when they met, um, she was um, obese, and so he was very 
very um he surprised. was upset he was surprised shocked. and he was upset shocked and, and dazed he you know it was like you know why couldn't you just be real why couldn't you be yeah. truthful and you know he kind of went in he saw the face and then it was like wait a minute is that and so it was one of those kind of things but like i said i, I wanted to be sensitive in, in how i told that but this this brother kind of uh you know he did say he did go he did introduce himself and he started off to say, you know, why couldn't you just be yeah. who you were? So I think the difference between what you just said and catfishing is it's not the person at all. Yeah. So in your in your example, it was her. It just wasn't all of her. But and he felt like he was catfished. That was what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that's how he described it to me. That's okay. why I shared it. So see, it. that's why we're learning. That's why we're learning these words so we can d- differentiate yeah. one term from another. And these are... You know, like I said, we've been together forever, so we, you know, we're still dating each other. But but these scenarios are very, very hurtful. And it could take a person a long time to get over, get through, get past having one of these yeah. examples done to them. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to go through a couple of more. So that was catfish. Uh, another one is being stashed. I had never heard that. I've never heard this one either. But apparently being stashed is when your partner keeps you away from other areas of their life. Ooh. So they stash you in one area. So say it's a say it's a work romance. But, but please don't date your coworkers. Like that's a whole nother thing. But if you do, you know, if you meet somebody and because we know somebody now and they're married and they got married. They work together and they got married. But if you if you have this person and they're and no one, the rest of the people in your life don't know about this relationship, mm-hmm. only the people. So say you're dating someone at work, only the people at work know mm-hmm. about this person. Or if you met somebody at church and only the people at church know that you and this person are dating, but your family doesn't know, your girlfriends don't know, your sorors or your bros don't know. You know, just like you just away. keep them isolated in one part of your life, wow. one facet of your life. That's called stashing. <laughs> wow. Never heard. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, wow. the, the definition goes on to say this person is not ready or willing to admit you exist. Um, you have not met this person's friends or family. And if you're with them, when he runs into any of them, you barely get introduced and you are certainly not introduced as that person's girlfriend or boyfriend. So if if you're listening or watching and you're being stashed, yeah, please. We are we are saying we're we are we're putting this information out there yeah. with the utmost sensitivity because we understand and recognize that somebody watching, somebody listening could be literally in yes, this situation. Yes, yes. And so we just want you to know like trust your gut. Yeah. And I want to get to I'm going I'm not going to start with the with the remedies for this but Trust your gut is huge. If you if you are in a relationship with someone and you feel like, wait, like I haven't met this person's friends. I haven't met their siblings. I haven't met, you know, they talk about these other important people in their life, but I've never met any of them. This person keeps me in a very segmented space. Wow. And the chances are they're probably asking. They're probably yeah, wondering, they're probably you know, why like, haven't you I... introduced yes. me to people? Especially if it's been a long time, right? So if it's been a year or two years, you're like, yeah, I want to meet your mom. I want to meet your siblings. You know, you talk about your family. You talk about, I mean, there's so much love. You sound like you all get along, but there's no connection. There's no introduction. And then the other part of that is even if, because we live in, in beautiful uh, Richmond, Virginia, Richmond is kind of small. So even if you run into someone when you're with that person and they don't, introduce you they don't say hey you know this is my this is my babe or this is my boo or this is my significant other or this is my you know this is the love of my life or you know if you just don't do that and you're like oh that's frank <laughs> like i can imagine going up to somebody and i'm having a great old conversation with them and then i look over and say oh yeah that's frank so yeah so if you're a person who is in any of these wow. scenarios if this is your life you know we want you to know that we are sensitive to that but we wanted to bring these things to light okay yeah and, and you know just to add to that and you're probably getting you know when you ask this question you're probably getting what well, i just want to make sure we good first 
thirds before before I start, you know, rolling you out <laughs> on this you massive out there. tour. Putting you out there, taking you on tour, and you know what? In some instances, that is a safe thing to do, especially yeah. like if people have kids. Yeah. So, like, if people have kids, you know, you don't. Yeah. yeah. It, well, old school us, you didn't just introduce somebody that you were dating to your kids immediately. Right. Like right. there needed to be some time. There needed to be some trust built. There needed to be um, some experience with that person before you expose that person to your children. And that's a thing too, you know, but we're talking about the rest of this person's adult life <laughs> when you're not, when you are intentionally and specifically not being connected to all of those facets of a person's life. You are being stashed. Wow. Yeah. I have learned something. Yes, yes, yes. That's what this is for. So, okay. So here's another one. You ready for another one? <laughs> Go for it. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is um, cushioned. So we went from stashed to being cushioned. Cushioned. I heard of that one yeah, I never heard of these. So cushioned refers to someone keeping you as their plan B. Oh, my goodness. That's just a fancy way to say you cheating. <laughs> you cheating. But but you don't have to be you don't have to be married, I guess, to be somebody's plan B. Keeping like you could just you be as a plan B. Right. So say, say you and I are dating. Uh-huh. Um, but I've got an ex, or I've got somebody who me and this person shared attraction with each other. Maybe we pursued it, but we didn't take it really serious. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm keeping that person around. Like we're still texting, we're still calling, we're still flirting. You know, we're still, uh, we maybe we still go out. Maybe we still have dinner every now and then, or we still have lunch every now and then. Like I said, if we work together or something like that, but you're not my prime. That person isn't my primary. You're my primary. So when I'm out in the world, mm -hmm. you. you're my first choice for mm -hmm. going out or going away for the weekend or doing something. But I still keep this other person. That's a side piece. Because just, in, <laughs> oh my God, just in case things don't work out between me and you. That's a side piece. I got an immediate plan B over here and I don't have to start from scratch because this person has, and I have been developing some kind of relationship with each other. Over time. Pookie wrote a song about Pookie it. Pookie wrote a song about it. Side piece. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> Not Pookie. Pookie wrote a song about it. Okay. So that is... So, you know, so <laughs> that is cushion. I'm sorry, y'all. But we were in North Carolina the first time I heard that song that's that southern soul y'all know about that i up. didn't honest to god y'all i did not think it was a real song like i thought you know how like um ricky smiley or you mm -hmm. know somebody who had these little no, fake no, no. you know songs no. they'll like they'll take a song that's been out and they'll change the words no. like i thought that's what it no. was and i had no idea that this was a real it's song, real song. and then i kept hearing it like the entire time we was in north carolina like every every time we got in the car it was on the radio and then my niece pulled up and she was playing it and then my brother in love <laughs> he, he was having a cookout and he he threw up the garage door and he was playing it and i was like this isn't a real song like why is everybody playing it and it was like no it's a real so song. it was like what we're off track a little bit but it was two years ago we were at a family gathering <gasps> And they cranked the song up and the floor got filled. The floor got and everybody was singing. And I'm like, no, I won't be nobody's side piece. I'll sit this one out. I like to dance. So that's what it sounds like. Mm -mm. That's what it sounds like. Okay, so cushion is 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 in North Carolina vernacular, Southern Soul. They call it brown liquor music. He was trying to be nice, but that's what they nah, really call it. Is brown liquor soul, music. You know? It's brown liquor music. I mean, you know. Side piece. If you are being cushioned, you are the side piece. I live on. Uh uh uh. uh. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I ain't gonna I do that gonna, though. Yeah, I ain't got no side piece. <laughs> <laughs> I Let not. me make that clear. Please, if he has a side piece, and his no daughters piece. find out. Mm. Okay. All right. You are you ready for the next Go one? Ahead. Go ahead with the next okay, one. Okay. So the next one is. Let me see. Being breadcrumbed. See. So being breadcrumb, I didn't get out more. I guess is yeah. Being breadcrumb is when someone <laughs> keeps you hanging on, but has little intention or no intention of maintaining a real relationship with you. Mm. 
That means that they just like the minute that you're ready to break up and you're like, okay, you know what? I'm not doing this no more. Then they throw your bread crumb. They'll come over, they'll hang out, they take you out to dinner, but then, you know, you don't hear from them again for a couple of weeks or whatever. You know, they kind of pop in and out. And when, and when you're done, when you're fed up, when you've had it up to here, mm -hmm. then they go, okay, wait, 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 let me, let me do a little something. Let me throw a little something at you just so that you don't, <laughs> so you don't run off. Keep them in the roster. <laughs> yeah. Keep them in the rotation. Yeah. So when you get, when you get bread crumbed, it's wow. when you, it's, it's, it's when the person only moves to keep you in the rotation. They only pursue you to keep you in the rotation. You're not really their number one. Or two. Mm. Or maybe even their number two. Ooh. But they, they, you know, they'll go weeks. They don't return your text. They don't return your calls. They don't do any of that. And then the minute that you send that, I done had it all. I, I done stood all I can stand and I can't stand no more. When you send that text and they know, okay, wait, wait, let me back up. Then they take you out yeah. or they come over. They bring flowers. Ugh. They take you to dinner. <laughs> they do the things that they know. Lazarus, like. Lazarus going to resurrect. Yeah, 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 yeah. They mm -hmm. got to resurrect something yeah. that's dying. Yeah. So that is being bread crumbed. <laughs> bread crumbed. Got that? Yeah, I got it. All right. So we've had, we've had stashed. Learn today. <laughs> learn today. Learn today. You stashed, cushioned, and bread crumbed. Okay. We got one more, and I think this is the one that most people know about, okay? So catfish, we started the, this conversation talking about being catfished, and I think that's that's a term that even us old heads know. We understood, we understand that one. We recognize that one. Stashed, cushioned, and breadcrumbed is the meat in the middle of this sandwich that I had never yeah. heard of none of this stuff before. Never. So here's our other piece of bread. It's being ghosted. Ghosted. Yeah, I have heard So ghosted is... When a person you are dating suddenly fades to black, like it's not even a fade, they just disappear. Abracadabra, abracadabra, poof, pocus cadabra, abracapocus. <laughs> Shout out to all my Buzz Bunny fans, <laughs> pocus cadabra. Is that old Buzz Bunny for real? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, hocus pocus, mm -hmm. like <laughs> alakazam, bam, and they're gone. And I mean, they're like gone, gone, like. Their social media profile is off or they've blocked you. They have completely blocked you. They blocked your number. They have blocked you on social media. They have told their friends, look, I don't fool with this person anymore. If they try to reach out to you to get to me, cut them off, you know, like, but this to be ghosted is it's like when you come, it's like if you were with somebody, like maybe living with somebody and you come home and all their stuff is gone. Like that's ghosted. Wow. Like they completely fade to black like it's lights out good night so is that the same as like online situation where you meet somebody and they hit you up for money to come live with you or date you and oh then God, you send the money that? and then they disappear so i'm not gonna look at him but yes okay um and so <laughs> So, ladies, because I don't know any men that this has happened to, but ladies, this is why we want y'all to be careful Please. with these online international relationships, because a lot of times those folks are real. But they're in it to get something from you, and it's usually financial. It's usually financial. So, ladies, please, please, please be very, very, very careful. And, and I'm just going to make a guess and put it out there that, ladies... There's somebody in your sister circle who is Magnum P.I. Yeah. And you should let girlfriend do what she do. Let her do it. <laughs> you should let her let do her it do because it. if you, if you, and I'm, and I'm, we're, we're genuinely saying this from a place of love and concern. Yes. Like trust your gut. Like if you start feeling like, well, wait a minute. Well, something about this isn't right. And, you know, I just don't feel like things just don't line up. The dots just don't connect. Something is off. Something is amiss. We want you to trust that. Yes, please do. Trust that because it can help you avoid a lot of heartache and pain and maybe even some financial loss in the future. Pay attention to your own gut. Pay attention to your own inner witness. And if you don't feel safe and stable about somebody, yeah. question it. Question it, question it. Now, the other end of that extreme is 
when you question a person to death and then they're like, okay, this isn't going to work because <laughs> you got trust issues. <laughs> but what we're talking about is in a normal, regular situation where a relationship is progressing at a natural, normal pace. Right. That's what we're talking about. So we're not necessarily talking about the extremes because people really don't live in the extremes. Most people are right down the middle somewhere. And so, sis, that's who we're talking to today. Amber, because ghosting can happen to men too absolutely yes yeah so we're not going we're not going to tell no stories because nope, then the people will know <clears throat> who we're talking nope, about not doing that so what's the bottom line to being stashed cushioned ghosted breadcrumbed and catfished the bottom line is that you are in a relationship with someone who is emotionally unavailable Hmm. We can come up with all of the fancy, snazzy, trendy names for all of these things. But at the end of the day, what it really means is that this person is emotionally unavailable. Right. Um, This is a person who will put up walls between themselves and other people to avoid emotional intimacy okay um attempting to have or be in a relationship with someone who is emotionally unavailable can result listen to this lineup can result in feeling rejected unloved neglected and undesired yeah and then you end up feeling like something is wrong with you yeah yeah and it's really not you Um, At times, an emotionally unavailable person's behavior Mm -hmm. can rise to the level of psychological or emotional abuse. And that's why we wanted to have this soulful conversation, family. We do not want any of you to be psychologically, mentally, or emotionally abused because it takes so much time to recover. Yeah. If you have emotionally invested yourself in a relationship with another person and that person does not provide the level of emotional support and love in a reciprocal way, it doesn't have to always be as much as you. But if you're not getting it back from them, then that can lead to emotional abuse. And that's what we want to avoid, family. We don't want you to be in these situations where you're giving, 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 and this person right, is taking, right, taking, taking, right, right. and your your cup is running dry, you know, trying to maintain this relationship, trying to keep him around, trying to keep him interested, trying to keep him active, trying to keep him engaged. It takes two to tango. You know, I'm, I'm curious. We haven't done any research on this, but I'm curious as what type of statistics we would find as it relates to the emotional unavailability, was it more with men or women? So, of course, we did not. I did not. I did. That's a great question. <laughs> and I didn't I didn't pull actual data. But from this book that I'm curious. reading and we're going to tag the book that I'm reading. Um, and so if you want to pick it up to get more information about these terms and about how they play out in real life. I'm just curious. Um, but according to this author, uh, the the ratio is higher that women suffer emotional abuse through these means Mm. than men. Gotcha. And she does give the the statistics for that in the book. I just don't remember them off the top of my head. Oh, I understand. I was just curious because I know um, probably most people hearing it probably instantly, they probably were thinking of men. Yeah. You know, that's why I asked that and try to be fair (laughs) as it relates to that. So, We're going to tag the book, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you what the name of it is. The book is called Ghosted and Breadcrumbed. Stop falling for unavailable men and get smart about healthy relationships. And for everybody who's listening, everybody who's watching, this book is by Dr. Marnie Furman. And her name is M-A-R-N-I, last name F-E-U-E-R-M-A-N. And we will um, put her link put the link for her book in the description and hashtag her so that she will know that we were having a soulful conversation about her book. Uh, But yes, this has been, this book has been um, on my iPad and I have been (laughs) flipping in and out of, because it, it, 
it, it was so distracting trying to read it because we know so many people and we know so yeah. many couples and we know so yeah. many single people. And it was like, I couldn't just read the book without thinking of all the people we know right. where what she's describing lines up jot and tittle <laughs> with some people, some real people we know. So it's not as if this is some made up thing. Mm -hmm. Like Frank and I know real people yeah. who have been impacted and hurt by these terms, by these types of relationships. And so we wanted to come on and just let you know that these are not your only options. Right. You have options. There are other people on the planet, in the world, in your circle who love you, who care about you, and who really don't want to see you battered and abused emotionally just for the sake of being in a relationship yeah. or holding on in hopes that things will get better. And so just... You know, we talk about all the time, you know, who sits at the table of your life and who has permission to speak to you and say the hard things. And family, sometimes it does take somebody who sits at the table of your life to say, this isn't good for you. Right. This person isn't right. good for you. This right. person isn't healthy for you. You're not healthy when you're with this person or you're not healthy. You know, you're great when you're with them. But then when they leave mm -hmm. and they don't call for three weeks or a month or whatever, the way you come undone isn't healthy. And so we want to see you, you know, be well. We want to yeah. see you be healthy and we want to see you find real and lasting love. So, again, we we offered these definitions not to point the finger at anybody, not to make right, anybody right, feel bad right. or guilty. If you're in any of these situations, the first step is awareness. Right. You got to yeah. acknowledge that you're in a situation like mm -hmm. this. And then you got to be able to have people that you trust in your life that you mm -hmm. can say, you know what? I think that's me. Yeah. And help me walk out of it. Right. <laughs> like, help me back out of it. And our disclaimer is that, you know, honestly, truthfully, these are not like individuals that we know that we identify to talk about their business. Right. You know, right. we read stuff. We you know, we research, we have conversations and things come to mind, yeah. but we're not the type to just take someone's business it, and make absolutely. it a podcast. Absolutely. So I want to make that clear. Oh, That's yeah, our that disclaimer. Point, yeah. I want to make that a disclaimer because we talk to a lot of people. And so if you're listening and you're one of those people we talk to, this is not about you, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's like, we just want to make that clear that a lot of times, you know, someone may fall in one of these categories mm -hmm. where we've read or researched or, you know, and, and that's where it is. I just want to make that clear because yeah. I, I don't want anyone to feel like, you know, we 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 coming at them. It's, yeah, it's not that's that. not our heart. It's that's not, not, that's our, not heart. our heart. We don't because do that. We don't it's do all that. about helping people, you yeah. know. And I think something you mentioned a few minutes ago, which um, I am beginning to see more and more importance in it. Um, when you talk about who sits at the table of your life, you know, when you talk about your relationships, relationship, you know, you really got to look at that table in that relationship. You know, like even, you know, with us in our marriage, you know, we look at, you know, the, the table mm -hmm. and we see those individuals that are at the table. And when they start <laughs> changing out, you know, we understand that that was necessary for whatever reason. For them and for us. For us. And yeah. so, you know, I, I just say that to say, you know, if you, you got to really start looking around your circle, your community of people. You know, if you have you, you mentioned earlier about that girlfriend who is you know, kind of the, the, um, the PI, yeah. you know, who, or who got that thing, got discernment. Listen yeah. to sis. Yeah. Listen to yeah. bro, yeah. you know, because yeah. they could really be providing some insight to you to really help you because they, they love you mm -hmm. and they don't want to see you get in a situation. So, you know, you have all of these things that come about and, and I, I just hope that you will kind of lean into them. Yeah. You know, when you yeah. get that kind of advice where someone says, girl, Oh man, I don't know, bro. This looked like was it stash or this yeah. seemed like stash yeah. or or ghost or listen, you know. And I know it's hard to do when you kind of are in love with someone. Yeah, yeah. You feeling someone, yeah. or you know, this the and one. You put in a whole lot of time yeah. and effort and energy yeah. and probably money from yeah. dating and going out and stuff. So yeah, yeah, babe. All of those are are absolutely great points. And to the top point that you said. Um, that's not our heart. We're just here to share information. And had we had this information in this way, we would have shared it with those folks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, because we have no problem with being the auntie and the uncle that says, wait a minute, babe. Come on, let's talk about that. <laughs> baby, girl. But I, but baby girl. Baby girl. <laughs> baby girl. Baby girl. <laughs> um, but honestly, you know, that, and we're going to talk, we're going to go ahead and just do a podcast about at the table because yeah, we need it to. just seems like everywhere we go now, that is an exercise that people 
um, want more information about. I was, I'm putting it in the emotional wellness toolkit. I just went on and made the decision last week. We're going to go ahead and put it in there, even though those weren't, that wasn't one of the tools. She's going to make it a book and make yes, it Yes. So we're going to do another book, but we're going to go ahead and put that in there. She's going to make it a book and make it available. <laughs> but I feel like this <laughs> whole conversation about at the table, um, is really an opportunity for yeah. people to get real. Yes. And to be honest and to even get free yeah. from, because some of us were holding people hostage mm -hmm. at our tables mm -hmm. and they're, they're fighting, trying to leave. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they, their season in our life is over. They know it. And mm -hmm. maybe even we know it, but we're so comfortable with them. We want them to stay. And that kind of mirrors some of these relationships yeah. that even when we feel and sense those warning signs, we still hold on. We still yeah. want to be connected. We still want to keep it going. We're, we're holding on to hope that something's going to change. Something's going to di be different, that they're going to come into some greater awareness about how fabulous and wonderful we really are and love us better. Right. Well, honey, let me tell you, <laughs> if you got to do all of that and some more to convince someone of your worth, they might not be worth all of that yeah. energy. They yeah. might not be worth all of that effort because the person that's really for you. I don't know that you have to do all of that. Like if you're chasing behind somebody who ghosted you or you're running behind somebody who, you know, is cushioning you or you're chasing after every breadcrumb that somebody is dropping just so that you can have connection and FaceTime with them. You're worth more. You yes. deserve better. Yeah, yeah. You deserve good love. Yeah. And I'm saying all of that not as the happily married person. I'm saying all of that because it's true. You do. And our communities, there are there are levels of love that we have yet to experience. Mm. And we always want to think that the only way we can get a certain kind of love is this way or that way. And I've just seen God do it differently. I've seen God surround single people with amazing folks and amazing connection and amazing relationship. And is it different from having an actual spouse? Yes. I'm not being delusional. I'm not saying that it, that it's, that it's the same. What I am saying is that it can fill in. Yeah. It can fill in certain areas in your heart. It can fill in certain areas in your soul that keep you until that love comes Yes. until that love comes. Cause yeah. that love, I mean, some people are just not going to get married. Yeah. Can we just be honest family and just say, everybody is not going to get married. Everybody is not going to have a happily ever after, but everybody can have love. Yeah. Everybody can have love. And if you open yourself up to experience those layers of love in all the ways that it comes then you can enjoy it. We say choose people who choose you. And nine times out of 10, there are people choosing you and you're not even paying attention to them because yeah. you want it a certain way and you want it to come from a certain person and you want it to all play out in some kind of way that you've put together in your head as right and fair, right? And as um, as a good reward for all the hell and heartache that you've been through right, in relationships. Right, but right, the truth right, is right. there are so many people around you who love you. Yeah. There are so many people around you who already think you're amazing, who already think you're talented, who already think you're beautiful. And if you would let those people in, it would heal your heart, honey. It would heal your heart. And so I hope that you got something out of this time of sharing with these so. words and so. we learned a lot so. we hope you learned a lot yeah and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make an effort to include more conversations with our single family yeah um because we don't want to leave you all out every episode doesn't have to be about the happily ever after yeah. um we can have some hard conversations we can have some soulful conversations about what's really going on with people right yeah. now and, and so we want to do that and i want to shout out the what I want to make sure I get it right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Is it the Young Urban League? Yes, the Young Young Professional Young Professional Urban, Urban League, League of Richmond. Of Richmond. I want to shout yes. you guys out because we had a we had a soulful conversation <laughs> with you all, and a it lot of so that, a lot of the conversation so we had with you all, kind of really got these conversations stirred up because there were a lot of single people there. There were a lot of single that people had some call. great questions about relationships, and so thank you, Urban League yes, of Richmond. Yes, because thank you. you all are the reason that I started reading this book. Yeah, and I know that that was a month ago or so or yeah. longer maybe six yeah. or eight weeks ago and we did a session with them we're going to say the right we're going to put the right name of the organization <laughs> in the crawl because i'm sure that both of us butchered it not because we don't love y'all but just yeah. because we're 50 
It didn't come it's, back fast. It's been a while. Okay, and it's been a while. But the that conversation, I can almost take it back to that day. The yeah. reason that I bought this book was yeah. because of that conversation with you all. So we hope that this part of the soulful conversation also blesses you and gives you some more perspective about some of the things that we were talking about. Cause that was a yeah. really powerful conversation yeah. and we loved having it with y'all. It was so much fun. So family, that's it. Um, wow. We came back strong, we didn't we? I, I would say so. Ow, I learned ow, some stuff ow. tonight because some of these terms, you know, I, I didn't know. She kind of held them from me because I, I actually, I didn't, I didn't ask, but she kind of gave me. Because I'm the, the bookworm. Like I'm yeah, diving into kinda, these books. She kind of gave me the crux of what we were going to yeah. be talking about. And I was like, all right, I'll just follow your lead. And <laughs> I learned some stuff today. Yeah. And I'm hoping that if any, any of you seriously are in any of these situations, that you will hear our hearts and hear um, hear what's been said and, and really do self-evaluation. Because I go back again. You are worth more. Absolutely. You are worth more. Yes, Bro, don't be mad at me because I said. That. Ah, but but sis, nephew, don't be mad. Look, nephew, you a king. You a kind you a king. king. So act like one. Exactly. Act like one, and pursue a woman who's a queen. And treat her right. Absolutely. All right, family. We thank you again for watching or listening. This is Sofa Conversation with Frank and Sheila, and uh, we are out. Take care, family, and be well. Be well. Bye bye.